I V M. Welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hello, this is Megha Bharti. I'm a research analyst at China Studies Program. at the Takshil Institution. In today's episode of All Things Policy, we are discussing emerging technologies, uh, their military applications, and uh, with some special focus on quantum technologies. Uh, so recently on February 23, uh, Defense Research and Development Organization, that is DRDO, announced that DRDO and IIT Delhi have successfully demonstrated a quantum key distribution, that is QKD link, for a very first time in country. This was done between cities of Prayagraj and Bindhyachal in the state of Uttar Pradesh. So this marks the beginning of Indian military complex utilizing an emerging technology like quantum to enhance domestic defensive capabilities. To discuss more on this topic, we have Arjun Gargas with us today. Arjun is research analyst at the High Tech Geopolitics Program at the Takshil Institution. Welcome, Arjun. Hey, Mega. Good to be here. I mean, we always talk about tech a lot, and I think uh, this is a very interesting and sobering uh, conversation on tech. So I think it will be fun to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, it is. Maybe we should have a separate program. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Arjun, tell us more about this announcement and a quick uh, intro to why this is important. Yeah. So as you said, right, this was this was an announcement uh, made by the DRDO, but it kind of went under the radar. No pun intended. But the the whole concept was kind of uh, something that not many people can uh, grasp when they first read it, and so it did not gain a lot of headlines. But the thing was, this was the first ever kind of application of uh, something like uh, some emerging technology like quantum by the Indian military itself. So. Uh, we know that uh, technology is going to play a major role in future conflicts and warfare capabilities uh, and uh, the indian army or the indian military itself has kind of given a bunch of you know dedicated funds and uh, programs to develop uh, state of the art uh, military technologies itself so i think this was one of that and uh, it was late last year that the indian army kind of set up a special lab for quantum and ai this was actually at the military college of telecommunication engineering mcet it's at the um, military headquarters of war in indore madhya pradesh so this was basically to uh, enhance the army's research in the field of quantum and to help in uh, leapfrogging into next generation communication and you know transforming whatever is the current system of encryption cryptography used by the indian armed forces to envelop quantum technologies and uh, make it kind of quantum cryptography so this this uh, lab itself they had like three areas which included quantum computing quantum key distribution quantum communication and quantum cryptography so when it was uh, established with the support of the national security council secretariat it kind of focused on these fields with respect to which they can kind of make military application and quantum key distribution is one of the major secure communication tools which are available right now so just you know briefly talking about qkd so quantum key distribution is basically kind of protocol it's a cryptographic protocol which involves the physics behind quantum mechanics it kind of enables two parties or like any two kind of uh, whoever is communicating between each other to share uh, to produce a shared random secret key which is known only to them and uh, that can be used to encrypt and decrypt messages now the distance between the parties which are in communication actually does not matter as long as you know they're both in the in quantum entangled state as they proclaim so this a specific announcement which is made by the DRDO kind of puts it like at a very you know good uh, distance between each other like the 
the distance between those two cities were about 100 kilometers and yet they managed to establish a QK relay. So this means that any communication which is taking place between those two cities or between a certain parts in those two cities can be uh, are using quantum entangled states and uh, can be secure enough to know that nothing can be decrypted without actually having the specific key which is available only to those like whoever are involved in the communication. So this kind of actually, as you said, like uh, marks the first like specific application which can be used in the military for, I mean, based off on quantum physics itself. So it's, I, I guess the Indian Army is uh, finding new ways to use these emerging technologies, especially with AI, quantum and all coming up the last decade. And this is just a result of that. It is a very kind of landmark achievement in the sense that quantum itself is not very, very uh, developed in, in the country. It's still a developing field. The government actually kind of has allocated around 8,000 crores for the, the development of quantum tech in the country, which we've talked about before. And a military angle to it is something that was mentioned during the announcement. And I guess this is a first major achievement in that way. So, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Arjun. So, uh, military applications of quantum technology are on the plate, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, um, military uh, technology, uh, I mean, military applications of quantum is something that has been discussed for a while. And uh, it, it kind of envelops a large field, right? So as I said, there is communication, there is uh, computing. So there are the capabilities of using these specific principles of quantum tech for both offensive and defensive capabilities. So that way, like let's take for example, comms, right? Communication. So there is a high chance of using quantum computers itself to break encrypted systems and conduct unlawful surveillance. Like that is because the the computing capacity of quantum computers is much, much greater and they can actually kind of break any modern encrypted systems. And there's also this whole concept of quantum satellite. China already released one in 2016. Now, there is also that whole concept of using this quantum satellites to conduct unlawful surveillance and can be gained unauthorized access to crucial information. So, in that way, and that way, that is why uh, people are kind of now building defensive capabilities using the same technology and uh, quantum encryption, quantum cryptography, and the key distribution, which was recently announced are all a result of the potential uh, military applications of using the quantum as an uh, you know offensive tool in warfare. So that that is something that we need to kind of keep in mind that it always starts with the offensive tools first and then you kind of go and build the defensive capabilities to kind of contain that with respect to the same technology. Yeah, I mean, nowadays we can see more or less of that happening. So this is quite important, actually. I mean, you can see uh, why many countries are now trying to rush towards quantum. I mean, Australia is already very well known in this field. And uh, I mean, quad countries uh, in their declaration had this, uh, you know, mention of critical and emerging technologies. There was a uh, U.S. agreement was with U.K. and also with Australia on development of quantum technologies. So, I mean, yeah, I can understand why countries would be looking into it so uh, i mean yeah, i just mentioned this like australia and us are looking into this but can you like elaborate a little more on what other countries are doing on this trend and significance of this for particularly for indian military yeah sure um yeah as you said right uh, there are a bunch of countries who are well versed in the field itself and uh, they have gone ahead and kind of used their expertise in quantum to develop sort of uh, military applications and for strategic interests to actually safeguard their strategic interests. Now, if you uh, you you mentioned about Australia, so Australia has been currently working on developing quantum tech for military, and they have already deployed this kind of quantum tech in areas like the, there's something called as the cryogenic sapphire oscillator, also called as the sapphire clock, uh, which uh, by the Australian military. It's kind of uh, used for improving the existing radar efficiency. This 
can be traced back to the application of quantum in sensing, right? So it uh, there is this whole concept of using this kind of technology for uh, in unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and optimizing drone movement. So because we've see, we've been seeing a lot of these UAVs and drones and all being used by the military for conducting their operations, and uh, now they're kind of equipped with these sensors, quantum-based sensors itself, they kind of work on the principle of entangled photons and kind of detect the presence or absence of a target object. So this also can be used to see that they have high accuracy compared to others. So that is why some countries like the like Australia have been using this and they potentially look at this as an alternative to military-grade GPS and stuff like that. So the Australian Army specifically released what is called as the Army Quantum Tech Roadmap, which explores the potential solutions across sensing, comms, and computing that this quantum tech has to offer to the military in the long run. If you look at others, I mean, Ukraine and uh, Russia is the hot topic of debate right now. But something interesting to note that uh, there were these comments made by the Russian President Vladimir Putin and his Deputy Prime Minister, who is in charge of the military industrial complex, Yuri Borisov, they kind of reiterated Russia's commitment to building state of the art weapon system using principles of new areas of physics. So, this new areas of physics is something that is again that can be interpreted in a lot of ways. But this also comes at a time that uh, there has been movements and there has been advancements in the country in expertise like last month quantum physics to make improved uh, weaponry systems. So yeah, I mean, those those countries and of course, you cannot forget the United States government. I mean, the United States military expenditure involves all of the rest. I mean, the rest of the other uh, co- countries and you can see that in their, you know, rates to use these technologies and build military applications itself. So they have a specific under the U.S. military, there's something called the Defense Science Board, DSP. They've also made an independent board within the Department of Defense, which focuses on quantum tech research as a special area. And this DSP or the Defense Science Board is kind of made up of top scientific advisors, which give direction to the military on scientific research of new weapons and technology and stuff like that. So in 2019 itself, the National Defense Authorization Act it directed the Secretary of Defense to set up a quantum tech research and development program. This was to work with the private sector in the country and other government groups. It also mentioned that there has to be certain ethical guidelines for using this type of technology. This is the first we have I've come across any country which has mentioned the concept of ethics and where and when you can use these kind of technology. So uh, the U.S. has done that. And this shows how the U.S. military and defense department are kind of actively involved in providing funds for research in the field and also the involved in the framing of standards and best practices for using this kind of technology in warfare itself. That was quite amazing. I mean, we can see that India has still a long way to go in the development of quantum technologies, research and also its applications. Uh, so folks, on this note, we'll take a short break and uh, we'll see you soon. Hey everybody, it's been another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. On Think Fast, Varun and Suchita discuss the rise of audio erotica and leadership dynamics at Indigo Airlines. Do you love board games? The Simplified Gang have a fun chat with Zain Memon, creator of the political strategy board game Shasun. On all things policy, the Takshashila folk analyze India's response to rare diseases on the occasion of Rare Diseases Day. On the Life Manifesto, Zarina explains the concepts of asexuality and aromanticism. And on the Musafir Stories traveler, Tanisha Guin explores West Bengal's hill station Mirik with Seth and Faiza. So, on a personal note, I wanted to let you all know that this week marks the 7th anniversary since I started IBM. 
I'm eternally grateful to the team we have here, especially Kavita Rajwade and Teja Sringarpure, who have been here since the beginning. They've seen the struggles, our eventual acquisition by Pratilipi, and our continued struggles to make podcasting a large and thriving part of the media industry. We have the best hosts in the world, and I have to say that I'm so glad and so grateful that they have chosen to work with us. And finally, I'd like to say thank you to you, the millions of folks who have heard or watched our content. All I can say is, you ain't seen nothing yet. I hope you join us as we continue this journey. In the meanwhile, do follow us on social media where IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any platform you're listening to. You can also check us out on YouTube. To get a list of all of our channels, you can go to ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube, where you can go to all the channels. And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors this week, SBI Life, Bank of Baroda, Max Life Insurance, India Water Portal, and HDFC Life Insurance. Thank you so much for making this possible. Hello, welcome to Athens Policy. I'm Megha Bharti and with me today I have Arjun Karkes. We are discussing emerging technology in their military applications with special focus on quantum technologies. So Arjun, as we discussed that a lot is happening on quantum technologies around the world and uh, now India is also joining the fray. And uh, given that our uh, you know neighbor China has been making quite a stride on this front, I think it's appropriate time that India has joined the you know joined this rank of countries focusing on quantum. Yeah, I mean, who can forget China, right? Like I omitted uh, China on the specific point that this would be uh, you should discuss it in more detail, and I guess we should discuss the whole concept of China using these kind of emerging tech in their, in building their military capabilities. So, yeah, as you said, China has made great strides and leaps in quantum itself. They are the current leaders in quantum communication and that's catching up to the US in quantum computing. They have the two fastest computers in the world right now. It kind of beat Google's uh, psychomore. And they, yeah, it's a, program or the scientific and the military program in their country has grown and ballooned to a great extent. So there is this whole concept on the question of how and what they're doing in the field of quantum military tech. There have been reports on the development of quantum radar itself. It was from a specific firm in China, which is working with the military. This can have devastating consequences on stealth technology, right? So our detection system such as quantum radar is kind of not only capable of determining every type of incoming enemy aircraft, but also the type of weapons being carried in the aircraft itself. So this can be done at a very uh, increased distance and uh, it uh, whatever, you know, stealth and kind of military uh, operations you use can be uh, diminished due to the use of these uh, quantum radars itself. So if China claims to have that, then it can uh, significantly raise their quantum capabilities and not even just quantum capabilities, military capabilities in general. So uh, there is also been the development of a quantum submarine detector, which is kind of made up of extremely sensitive quantum sensors. These are called as, I mean, these are acronymized as Quids. It's a uh, superconducting quantum interference devices. This was reported by the Chinese National Academy of Science. This technology is basically capable of detecting any underwater submarine from long distances, giving a huge advantage in the military domain itself. So if these reports actually hold, uh, hold true and if whatever they claim is actually real, then we might actually have to be prepared for the Chinese military gaining an immense advantage with future warfare capabilities because these emerging technologies kind of give a leg up to anyone who is using it at quantum definitely does to Chinese military. I really like the name Squid, you know. I mean, it's like, okay, this is a submarine and it's named Squid. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess. PM Modi is not the only one who is very good at acronym. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, China has been doing a lot of things in quantum for a while now. And I think one of the key person to kind of you know, look into is Panjami. He's 
Coiler, you know, father of quantum science in China, actually, and he has made uh, quite a several breakthroughs. In fact, a lot of developments and, you know, China's achievements, which we mentioned in our podcast today, are uh, directly or indirectly a result of Pan Jianhui's work. Pan Jianhui is, um, he's a physicist at University of Science and Technology in China. And he were, studied uh, in, I think, Austria for, Austria for a while, and then he came back and join Chinese Academy on Research in Quantum. And, you know, under his guidance, China has made a lot of successful experiments, like first, just in a quantum sat- satellite, which you mentioned. It was also under Pan Jianwei. Then this entanglement experiment from satellite to ground, that was, I think, at a over 1,000 kilometer area, they achieved that. So that was also under Pan Jianwei. And uh, this latest development, quantum computer, which they built, Chuzhongqi 2.1, I think, that was also uh, under the team which was uh, laid by Ban Chianbei. I think Chuzhongqi 2.1 is around, it's claimed to be at least around 10 million times faster than Google Syncomore. So, and it is claimed that is Syncomore, uh, like what it can do in 200 seconds, like merely 200 seconds, a classical supercomputer can take out around 10,000 years to compute. I mean, that's a, that's, you know, this is very, very noteworthy achievement. And to imagine that all this has been done under guidance of like one person reminds me of, you know, our India's nuclear program at Homi Baba. So, yeah, I mean, China's developments, I think, uh, in quantum can all be dedicated to this one person. Yeah, I mean, the dude has uh, kind of got China from from like a zero and a nowhere in the field of quantum to being one of the leaders in quantum tech itself around the world. And it's not just the scientific aspect now, and it's more or less the military aspects as well. So uh, we should kind of hope for India itself to build on their competency in the field and come up with new solutions and military solutions for uh, quantum tech. But let's see, no, right? Uh, it, because we are going into the age, the information age and how, and like you uh, you talked about Mega in the previous episode, the warfare capabilities in an age like this is totally different. And the normal, uh, you know, conventional warfare is going to be thrown out of the uh, window and we're going to, be looking at uh, weapons equipped with uh, different technologies and uh, using kind of different tech like cyber and electro warfare capabilities and stuff like that. So this just comes under the ambit of all that. And I hope India kind of can catch up to a certain extent too with the rest. Yeah, I mean, along with quantum, the, uh, as you mentioned, there are a lot of other technologies and we'll probably need or we'll probably also need this, you know, whole of a nation kind of approach, maybe. Yeah, that's uh, that's a topic for another episode, I guess. So that's it for today, folks. And this was a very interesting conversation. Thank you so much, Ajun, for joining us today. And thank you so much, listeners, for tuning in. Thanks, Mega. If you liked our show, don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the IVM network. You can tune into them on the IVM Podcast app, ivmpodcast.com, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy, and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle at takshashilainst or our website takshashila.org.in. What is the workplace and how does your gender and body affect your right at work? Hey, I'm Priya Mirza and on the Longest Constitution podcast, we critically examine the vision of the Indian constitution and laws. In season one, we look at sex, gender, sexuality in India and the landmark judgments which transformed our rights as citizens in this country. In season two, we discuss the laws which shape the workplace and examine how ability, competence and merit impact us and much more. 
Join me, Priya Mirza, every Wednesday only on the IVM podcast app, website, and all the major podcast streaming platforms. We know you love fast food, fast fashion, faster payment, lightning fast internet speed. Then why not fast information? On Think Fast, where we discuss the latest developments in the world of technology, business, marketing, pop culture, with a side of sarcasm and my dad jokes. Not just mine. Not mine, Varun. My jokes are funny. So join me, guys, the funnier one, Suchita Salwan, co-founder of LBB, and me, Varun Dugalala, the co-founder of the Glitch. As we think fast, only on the IBM Network. Fresh episodes out every Monday on the IBM app, website, or wherever you get your podcasts from.